Hello, Miss Courtney Dillon. How are you doing? Hi, I'm good. How are you today? I'm fine. And hello, Eric. And I'm I'm really excited about what you're about to say next, an upcoming big deal. Yeah, thank you. Um, so I am going to teach a summer solstice three part. It's a I'm sorry, I mentioned this. I don't know why I had this little fan on. Um, three part solstice class, and it's going to start on June 14th. And then we're going to do the solstice, which is the 21st and then the 28th. So it's going to be a three-part workshop and it should be a lot of fun. So I have early bird special. Yeah. Yes, I'll send it to you. And then I have the early bird special um, this entire week. So I think this will. So sign up. I hope everybody can join. Yes, do. Eric says so. All right. So we are going to. Um, <coughs> we're going to interview Meatloaf. He's here. Eric's. Oh, good. Um, Eric's bringing him. He says, hi, mom. He says, he, hi, he, I love you. He hopes you are. Well, he wants you to rest. Yeah. Yeah. I think this getting COVID pneumonia was probably what was meant to do. Make me stop in my back. I, he's, not, else, well. he's not disagreeing with that. Yeah. <laughs> he wants you to rest. OK. Takes an oncoming train to stop me. All right. But, uh, meatloaf is walking yeah. in. Tell me, uh, thank you so much, Meatloaf. I'm actually a big fan. Bad Out of Hell. I mean, I just love that song. Rocky Horror Picture Show. I mean, I, I used to be part of one of those cults that would go to the River Oaks Theater or Alabama Theater and mm -hmm. do a raincoats and the lights for, and play along with all the songs. And, you know, when I was in college, basically, it was fun. Yeah. So. Uh, he's wearing, so when I see him, I can, I can see a picture of him. He's wearing like a dark black suit. So he's tall. He's a big. He's a big guy. So cool. Uh, he says he's he's a little shy, actually, which I didn't know. But uh, he's kind of a little shy. I am. Yeah. Too. But he says that he is happy to talk to you, and he says thank you for having me, Lisa. Well, I'm so grateful. So I'm just going to go through the list uh, of uh, community uh, generated questions, if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. um, he says he always gets a little nervous with interviews, but he'll do his best. Oh, well, I know you'll do fine. It's, you know, you're among friends and family, okay? And okay. fans. All right, uh, Mr. Meatloaf, uh, what was your sole purpose in this past life? Uh, he's, he, I heard him say to sing, but he, and then he was chuckled, he laughed, but he said, um, he liked to make people happy. Oh, that's wonderful. What a wonderful mm -hmm. purpose. So yeah. what were your beliefs before you died? Did you believe there was an afterlife, uh, a God or some sort of higher power? He says he wasn't so sure. Mm -hmm. He wasn't so sure what he believed. Uh, he liked to believe in the idea of, of afterlife, of God. But he shows me, he says, what was as a kid drilled into him oh yeah didn't feel like god so he believed in creative energy he mm. believed in spirit but he didn't necessarily uh believe in the god that he grew up with like organized religion yeah it looks like okay. a uh strict strict bible church oh, okay sort of okay mm. Um, was your death a shock to you or did you kind of know you're about to die, going to die soon? Uh, <laughs> I wasn't a spring chicken, he says. Not that old. Well, I'll, but I'll he didn't expect to go right then. He said he had life in him, but you know what he said? It was a, it was a surprise in that he didn't know, but he hadn't been feeling well. Like he had had some other health problems, it looks like. Oh, um, tell me about your crossing over. What was that like? Uh, peaceful, but surprising. So he didn't, I mean, he really, you know, he didn't actually expect to go then. Mm -hmm. Um, he was met by his, he shows me his mom. Okay. And his dad, but it looks like they didn't, they've healed they've done some healing because i didn't think they 
got along particularly well or something. Wait, the mother and the son or the father? No, his, his, with his father, it looks like. So, but he, but they're very close now and they've done a lot of healing together. So he shows me his mom and his dad. Um, he says other family and friends. And he said, it's just, a, it was a normal, <laughs> normal crossing over. Okay. At this way. Normal. Yeah. Paranormal. Uh, yeah. All right. So tell me about the relationship with your mother. Did, did you have a good relationship with her? Very she- close. Yeah. Okay. Very close. I love my mother very much. Yeah. She is the reason that I became who I am in the world. Okay. Like with, so he's showing me, you know, with it, there's issues with every parent. Of course. Yeah. But he feels very close with his mom. Yeah. Very close with his mom. So and what was the, the struggle uh, that you had between you and your father? Uh, he calls it a struggle of misunderstanding. Um, he feels like one of his big, and I, you know, I was talking to him before this and today, um, one of his big problems in, or, uh, soul contract, thank you, issues in that, in his lifetime was feeling really uncomfortable always. Like he never, and he, he's still even today, like I'm, I'm like, it's okay to talk. Like you're, you're yeah. going to be, but he doesn't feel he's not comfortable and weirdly he's not comfortable in social situations like you think right. because he's in audiences and all yeah. that like but that's he's not an intimate face-to-face conversation. yeah he has a he always feels like he's saying the wrong thing oh he feels awkward uncomfortable um this comes from kind of feeling really uncomfortable in his his body um like feeling um ugly fat oh. and yeah he struggled with all of that and so he he really had a problem with that and his dad uh didn't help is what i'm hearing how did he hurt did he he says he drank a lot okay did he make a lot or abuse yeah physically or Mm. put you down um some physical abuse Mm. He doesn't really feel like going into it so much. Of course not. He calls it water under the bridge, but yes, it was there. It was there. Uh, A lot of um, talking down, belittling, and emotional, emotional abuse. So, what about when you became famous and and didn't? didn't My father saw me through a certain lens, Mm. and this lens was painful to me. It was something I worked to overcome throughout my life, but I didn't feel like I could get ever or ever out from under his shadow. So did any healing start between you guys before you transitioned or was it all after? On the other side. On the other side. Yeah. Yeah, It looks like they did not have, there, there was some type of falling out. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I didn't realize this, but did your father greet you? And was there an immediate love and forgiveness between you and he after transition? After you transition? It sounds like it took a little bit or not. Um, love and forgiveness is something he has in his heart. He always, it's mm-hmm. like when you have a father, he says he didn't really feel when he was on the planet that his father loved him. Oh. And he knows many people listening today will relate to this. Mm. That's why he wants to be transparent and honest because he wants to express the struggle, the real struggles of being a human, not just this um, false identity of a musician. Right. It's important for people who hear this to understand that I was a real person with real struggles. I was like you. And if you feel that you have a parent who doesn't love you, you can still hmm, learn to love yourself. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I I get you. I I was in the same predicament. So my father was just mentally ill. Maybe your father was mentally ill too. Uh, If you call alcohol mental illness, then yes. But yes, he would agree that alcohol is part of mental illness. Yeah. What was your soul contract with your father? 
But what were you both supposed to learn or and or teach? The uh, soul, con he says he was there, here on the planet, there, here, here on the planet to learn to love. He says he sometimes doesn't know how to talk about himself now, like he. Oh, um, give me back this. Uh, here on the planet to learn to love himself in spite of intense scrutiny okay it wasn't it, it, like i feel when he's a kid i mean it just feels so um hard like i don't think he had an easy childhood at all i mean oh, it just feels like yeah uh he says they didn't call it that back then oh. they didn't use that word that was not a word anybody used um that's a fashionable word of the day but it would yeah. be defined as bullying now yes teachers uh, other other students, parent, um, friends. Eric can relate, can't you, Eric? Yeah, Eric can relate. Eric doesn't relate on with the physical body issues. Yeah, as much as I do, he relates uh, because he shows me just like he had a like a, a struggle with his weight throughout his life. Oh, yeah. There was a big struggle. Yeah. And when he was younger, um, he, he's laughing. He said, the meatloaf, the name, nickname meatloaf didn't, it, it came for a reason. Oh people God. call him meatloaf. Yeah. And, it, you know, that's even a form of bullying, right? If you oh, think yeah. about it. Of course. But he did, he eventually just owned it and became meatloaf. But, you know, it was a hard, it was a hard name. Oh, that's awful. Oh. Uh, all right. So was your father here to teach you? something that self-love in spite of external um, treatment? The underlying lesson on a soul level is forgiveness. Because he, he's, it's interesting. He, as he said that he kind of opens a book, I, I see it open and it flops open a bunch of different pages. Like, you know, like those, um, what are those? Like, you know, the open, like kid books. That, oh yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I can't explain what, what it's called in this moment. I'm sorry. Um, and it flops open to all these different pages and it's all these different lifetimes he's had with his father. Oh, yeah. Where okay. there's been a lot of struggle and, and strife. And he has also had lifetimes where he's been difficult to his father. So it feels like there's a rebalancing happening here. And also that we can come to terms with each other as souls and learn to love each other in spite of our human failings. Now, between lives, y'all go through the healing. You went through some healing with your relationship, right? At, mm -hmm. when you, after you transitioned. Now, are you gonna go through another life and have the same need for karmic rebalancing? Or are you not? Uh, he, he laughed and he says, I hope not. <laughs> oh God, oh my gosh. Uh, he said, um, Likely not. No, I think I think there is some something accomplished actually through oh, this. Good. That's so yeah. good. Mm -hmm. So what was your so forgiveness? Forgiveness. He said, father and he's and he's what? he's very yeah. sweet because he's like uh, he says funny things about himself, disparaging kind of. Yeah. He says he's he hopes he's not a lost cause. No, of course not. So um, and I know you're just teasing. Uh, so your father was there to teach you how to uh, forgive others like him and also maybe yourself for whatever reason yes in short and learn to love myself in spite of um, of because it, it's not it, it's his father is like the central he shows me like the central person in all of this but there's all these people who he feels are kind of like just not are looking down on him you know and it feels like he is uh he kind of felt like a freak or a circus act. Oh gosh. Oh. Did, and oh, oh. yeah, he continued actually, I continued to feel that way throughout my life. Like this is a theme of okay. feeling. Did you guys agree to have this kind of conflictual relationship, you and your father? Was that, hey, okay, don't get pissed off that you want to learn about forgiveness. So I'm going to have to do this to you and that. Was that part of it? I will say so now yes but i didn't know that when i was here on earth you want to describe a life 
that most influenced your life as meatloaf or, or and it could mm. be with or without your father as the central thing he's showing me um this is interesting he's showing me a lifetime where he is a mom it's not anything like a famous person or anything like that but he's showing me a lifetime where he is a mother it's um he's, it's in southern france he says Okay. And he's very critical to his three daughters okay. as they're getting like there's they have a, a dressing chamber mm. and um, like people who help them get dressed. It looks like a pretty affluent family type thing. And he's very critical of them and their appearance and what they look like. Um, and it's almost like no, not almost like it's he had to learn the flip side of that. Yeah. So this lifetime, there's a lot of opportunity for him to learn. He's like, he shows me a coin, the other side of the coin. So was your father in that life? Yes, it was one of his daughters. I knew it. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's the third one. It's the youngest wow. one. Yeah. So why did you decide to, I mean, we choose our bodies too. Why did you decide not to come in as a paragon of beauty? Because I was so critical in this other life and, oh, and in several yeah. other ones. Yeah, he was so critical. Yeah. Exactly. And he decided to not be, um, and he, he started smiling. He's like, what? You don't think I was good looking? No, um, you just said it. So I'm just, I know, I know. He's, 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 he's um, uh, joking with you. I know. Um, I knew he would. Yeah. But he says, um, you know, it's like you have to learn the opposite lesson. <coughs> yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And so he was like, he shows me really critical beauty and beauty was of central importance mm -hmm. in this other life. Central oh, importance. That's all he thought about is like looks and status and oh, beauty God. and all of that. So he didn't, he had to learn. Um, it's interesting he chose to be a performer I mean it's like a very interesting combination oh. of things right like it's fascinating oh, to, 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 to pick a, a body that you did not feel comfortable in but yet be you know a, you a, could not he said feel more exposed but there yeah. was something that happened on stage where he felt transformed oh. he would temporarily forget all of the um that was Bella I watched her she did it Oh. <laughs> it's okay. He's laughing yeah. about your dog. Um, he would temporarily forget everything. It was like he would be, he could be very present, very in the moment. So. Oh, that's good. Awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, so, what are you doing now that you left planet Earth? Are you still singing, performing, or are you just kind of like sitting in the lazy boy, just relaxing for a while? Um, he's, as you said, that Eric pulled up the you know, the side of the lazy boy, the arm yeah, right. the little and flipped arm. back um, and he <laughs> has this drink right there. Uh -huh. That's what Eric's doing. Um, yeah. Um, no, he's been busy. He, he, he's a performer. He is an artist. He's a singer. So he likes to continue this, this in other realms. And have you been a performer or a singer in many of your lifetimes? Uh, several, yes. He yeah. also does this thing, this is interesting, where he's helped a couple of people with their desire to be performers, especially people who have had like really difficult struggles in their childhoods or. You say you do that from your side where you are now or you did while you were alive? No, uh, well, that's from, cool. from now. Yeah. So he, um, you can, I, it seems like if you are a struggling performer, you might be able to ask Milo for a little yeah. help. Mm -hmm. uh, did you, uh, do you get to jam with other famous musicians on the other side? Or so can you name a few? Uh, he likes um, Van Morrison. Okay. And um, he actually, oh, he shows me Van Morrison, Jan Janice Joplin. Oh, yeah. And uh, he shows me a picture of Jimi Hendrix and he likes, they, he's not of, the, he's making, he's self-deprecating. He's not of that caliber, but they'll let me sit with them. Oh, what about Eric? Are you going to jam with Meat Love? <laughs> you can learn some new licks. 
Yeah, Eric said he they have been the last couple of days. So. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who was the person in life that you would have liked to perform with the most? Yeah, think about this one. He would say <coughs> any of the people he just named. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Did you know that your song Bad Out of Hell would be successful when you made the album? No clue. No. Really? You know, performance for him wasn't about accolades and recognition. Yeah. It was about like he just he just became something different. Yeah, he really felt nice. different. He just yeah. enjoyed, you know, it wasn't it was about the actual performance. It was about the song. It was about yeah. the music. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's all it was yeah so no he didn't yeah. and he really did it in a way you know yeah exactly and he was showing me it with the I don't and I'm not that familiar with his music so he's he was giving me a little flack about that earlier but um it's not even with everything he did he had no idea like he just made it for himself mm -hmm. and then put it into the world there was no like oh I'm going to make money off of this or I'm going to get rich or any of that nothing yeah oopsie i'm just saying i i think i'm pretty sure i have uh, his albums uh on my iphone um so in so yeah she she's a big fan <laughs> oh yeah i am oh i'll do anything for you i love that song too okay she said that's one of his better songs i really like it yeah um in reference to, to the first time you heard paradise by the dashboard lights on the radio how did you react and that's i've got that song too it's out of, his um, out of hell he shows me a picture of you like a younger version of you like <laughs> um a long time younger what he's very young very beautiful yeah. um he said it's it was like exciting, but also strangely uncomfortable because you're not, if you're a very private person and you hear yourself on the radio, it can be no, like, Oh, millions are listening. You're just like, Oh my gosh, much in the same way that, you know, he's talking about, I guess us putting this out. Like we might have a moment where we're like, Oh my gosh, there's a oh, million yeah. people uh, watching this. You know? I don't even think about it anymore, but you used to, he says, Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, exactly. Uh, how did you feel about being in the Rocky Horror Picture Show movie? Um, it says it was a lot of fun. It was um, right up his alley. Oh, that's great. You were awesome in it too. He says he, he actually is, you know, he doesn't like say very often that he did a good job or something, but he thinks he did a pretty good job in that. Like he, yeah, he, he like, yeah. Yeah, so. Absolutely. Now, what made you pick the name Meatloaf? I mean, we, we talked a little bit about it, but is there a particular more detailed story behind that? Yeah, it comes from his father. <sighs> yeah, this is like super painful. Um, well, my, my father called us all scum of the earth. We were like six, seven, eight years old on. It was crazy. So, yeah, um, get it. yeah, it comes from his father and it looks like a name assigned to him at pretty like I think birth right after he was born because oh, okay. he was he says that he's like a big yeah, yeah he's baby. a big baby yeah okay. and okay. red okay. red like okay. ruddy he shows me ruddy oh okay cakes and very red um yeah. like a big hunk of meat <laughs> oh, oh. so you, you and then I think is in it they anyway it stuck it started there and it just, it stuck. And kids in school called him meatloaf. It's, you know, everybody called him meatloaf. How did your mother feel about that? It was just his name. Okay. Uh, tell about the, tell us about the relationship with Norwegian singer, Marion Raven. I didn't know about that. It feels uh, like there's a romantic connection here. Okay. Of some sort. I'm trying to understand it. Cause I don't really, I don't understand totally. That's all he's going to say. Okay. okay. That's fine. Keep private. How was it working with the Spice Girls in Spice World? I didn't know you did that. He's laughing. It was, it was an experience. Um, he said they're all very nice people. Uh, he does not fit in with the Spice Girls at all. Okay. Yeah. I cannot imagine. Did they, <laughs> they love but you? But they're all very nice to him. He, okay. All they very nice. Yeah, exactly. He 
really enjoyed the Spice Girls and still does. He felt they were very, actually very nice people, very down to earth, but he does, he, it was just sort of like um, a little awkward, I think. Yeah, it was quite different. As you can imagine, yes. Genres and everything. All right, so your first spouse, you were married to Leslie Adlai, 1979 to 2001. That's quite some time. Mm -hmm. What happened? Um, he has he has kids with her. It okay. looks like so he doesn't want to speak ill of her at all. Okay, all right. Uh, he he feels like he's very he's he's very respectful of people. He feels like there were differences in their marriage, personal differences in their marriage, and they uh, some things were his doing. But out of the respect of my children, I would do not want to speak ill of Mary their mother. 1979. And he has a lot of love in his heart for her. There must have been some good in that relationship. It, a lot of good. A lot of good. A lot of love and beautiful children, a beautiful life. Maybe the contract when you was up and it was time to move Yeah, on. he has no regrets about it. Okay. Yeah, he doesn't like to speak ill of people. Very no, much. what about Deborah Gillespie? 2000 married 2007 to 2022 i guess up, maybe up to the point of he, they were together it looks like when he um okay. crossed over it looks like so he has beautiful memories of his wife okay and she continues to grieve mm -hmm. he wants to say to her that he loves her very much and that she because she's very grounding and very positive and not like She's not like Hollywood. She's very like a normal, kind person. So oh, that's nice. He misses her very much. Yeah. He's around her though. I think she feels him. I think oh, she God. really has a sense that he's around her a lot. So, oh. uh, what did you love to do when you were alive on your downtime from music? Did you have like hobbies or anything? You know, I wonder if he is somewhere on um i'm hearing this he said not ever diagnosed but i'm wondering if he's somewhere on like uh the the spectrum could be uh, it could be because he says uh like he would be he, he really didn't like social interaction that much oh, yeah he really um spent a lot of time by himself he was obsessed with music so even when he wasn't like actively in the studio making music or performing he's like writing music he's thinking about music okay. um, his whole life revolves around music okay other hobbies um i'm seeing a knife and cooking so i think he did cook at some points okay but music was it or music murder. was his life murder yeah no not murder <laughs> the style uh, your style of uh, music in uh, bad out of hell was so extraordinarily different from really anything that was on the airways you know, at that particular time, is it possibly that is it possible that this style was influenced by spirit or spirits? You know, of, of passed over musicians. I mean, did you channel that style? Not, uh, not consciously. Okay. What he says is though, yes, it is spirit. Uh, it's all spirit. Yeah. He did have an awareness of that. Like it comes from somewhere. It it oh, comes okay. from beyond me, the small me. But what he does, he didn't have a sense that he's like channeling in okay. the sense uh, in in this way that we think of it. But it was, it was more of, just yeah. And he said, "What I did, what I did in music, was solely unique to my vision and to myself. I didn't worry about and really anywhere, anytime, fashion trends, what was popular, who saw me." Yeah. who like it he just didn't care he just wanted to sing his own song Maybe that's why i love you so much um because he he marches you know to his own drum he sing and he keeps saying i just wanted to sing my own song like good. in his way good who do you think on the other side in spirit uh, probably channeled some stuff to you mu music wise mozart he laughs really <laughs> Cool. I don't know if he's joking or he's laughing. Um, he has a lot of influences. Um, he's showing me a picture of Elvis, like he likes Elvis too. Okay. A lot, like an influence of Elvis. 
Okay. Um, but he doesn't, he would just kind of like listen and absorb. He's like really into listening and absorbing to everything. Music also is a way, is a survival for him. Mm. It's, it's not only how he felt like himself, but it's how he got through yeah. everything. Difficult times, yeah. Well, most of his life was difficult, it looks oh. like. What's the future of the future of rock and roll, you think? Good question. Um, he thinks there needs to be a return to um, a like more traditional beat or meter in in song because it's kind of like um he he appreciates certain artists right now uh he's naming um what's her name billy eilish okay he appreciates what she's doing because it feels a little different and like her own song yeah just um, things just sound the same like overproduced and yeah exactly he's not is it he's not trying to be critical but that's not his his style he yeah. he appreciates when people are like uh synthesize the music around them and then from that synthesis are able to create their own right it, you know their own song basically um all right so you were both a singer and an actor did you enjoy one over the other uh singing yeah singing. but he did he actually kind of got into acting sometimes yeah. he says it was fun but it didn't he never felt like an actor like it didn't feel like oh i'm an oh, actor oh yeah. okay i got gotcha. you all right uh did, do you know your song objects in the rearview mirror may appear closer than they are became a mandela effect really i did not know that oh um, no he didn't know that he says and what is, you know is, he's thing? asking what does that even mean well like you know the baron the, the, there's two different like there's two different realities where the Berenstein Bears uh, books, but there's Berenstain Bears books. And, mm. and, and in one reality, your name is Meat Space Loaf, and another reality is Meat Loaf. The Mandela effect is pretty much that. I don't know what what, what the two different realities of the song was, whether it was the song lyrics or the title with the Mandela effect. Uh, Y'all can look it up. He's, he doesn't know about that. Okay. Yeah. Um, would you really do anything for love, according to as the as you sing in that song? Uh, no, it depends. Oh. Um, he says he would do a lot for love. Yeah. And when you have felt unloved yeah. a good deal of your life, that's where that comes from. In the end, of, uh, do you really feel like you were loved? Yes. You- by his wife, by his children. Yes. Did you end up feeling love for yourself? No, he struggled with that to the end. He felt more acceptance of himself. He felt better in some ways, but love, I'm still learning that. Yeah, well, I think most of us are. Uh, What was your, okay, childhood like in this life compared to some other lives? I think we've covered that, unless you want to add anything to it um no you got a sense of yeah, my, so. my childhood mm-hmm. what would you say was your biggest accomplishment on earth being a good father oh wow i thought it would be singing that's awesome mm-hmm. but what was your biggest regret this lifetime mm, sometimes he says that i didn't know how to stand up for myself oh, okay okay uh, this person says, I saw a TikTok where you're going in for uh, surgery shortly before you passed. Did you know then that you were going to die? A pretty good sense of it. But he, it, he wasn't sh- like he thought it was a possibility because he's really sick. I mean, very, very sick. It looks yeah. like. With what? Um, COVID. Oh, okay. COVID. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've got that now. He says, you're not going to hear, you're not on your way out. Eric yeah. agrees, but you need to take care of yourself. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, but he had underlying health problems. So that's part of what's going on. Like what? High blood pressure, I've, diabetes? He blood. has um, high blood pressure. He has okay. something with his lungs, some lung damage. I think he might've been a smoker at some okay. point. 
Yeah. Is, I'm seeing this, the smoke. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, but it wasn't like diagnosed really, but he had, he, he had damaged his lungs a great deal. He says actually. Oh, okay. So did there are ever, problems there. Did you ever have problems with drugs or alcohol? Yes. Yeah. What was your drug of choice? Alcohol looks like. Okay. Did yeah. you ever do like things like heroin, cocaine? Or if you don't want to, um, smoke, fine too. He dabbled in drugs. He didn't get into heroin, it looks like, which he says, thank God. Yeah. But um, he did, well, more than dabble in some drugs. I think he, he doesn't really want to go into all of that so okay. much, but he, yes, he, he did. Like most musicians, sometimes they self medicate, sometimes it's for creative, you know, inspiration, et cetera. He's, he thinks that's a load of hogwash, the Creed drugs for Creed. Yeah, <laughs> but, but that's what they but, think sometimes. Yes, he will agree. All right. Like many musicians and celebrities, did Bleep try to own you? Or did they? Uh, like, like yeah. A record label exec. Uh, a little bit. It looks like he doesn't want to get into specifics, but he will say that this is what he's referring to when he wishes he had known how to, because there was one lesson mm -hmm. around learning how to stand up for himself. And he didn't, because of his difficulty with communication. I mean, he really was socially yeah. awkward. It was hard. It's hard for him to talk now, oh, if you can believe it. A great job. You really are. So um, did, did they screw, <laughs> screw you over financially or did they, did, did they try to bend your creative you know, uh, there it's like a more like um, taking of money okay. and telling him, well, both, I think, is the answer okay. there, because they were telling him what to do. And he didn't appreciate that. That said, he also made some poor financial decisions. Mm -hmm. So it was like a kind yeah. of a combination of things. Okay. Yeah. How did you feel about the state the world is in now? And are you very happy that you exi exited at the time at this time? He has some concerns yeah. about the state of the world. He's not going to sugarcoat it. Mm -mm. He feels that we as humans need to generally get our act together and learn to be more kind, respectful to the planet and loving to one another. He's in that category. He says he's not putting himself on a pedestal or thinking but he's you're better. A loving, kind person. I would agree with that in, on the most part. Yeah, that's awesome. What's the thing you miss the most from being on earth? Um, his children. Okay, children. What about other things besides relationships? He was showing me, he was making a joke and he said, he showed me a, like a pan of meatloaf. He was just making a joke. Um, meatloaf? I love how many. He doesn't, it, you know, what's so funny is he didn't even like people would get offended about his name, you know, like uh, they would find it offensive. And he, he wanted to always tell people like, it was like a, it was like a nickname. It wasn't, yeah. you know, he didn't come up with this or anything. Okay. Right. Um, what does he miss? He miss, he shows me like sitting under a tree and just feeling like the wind under a tree. Yeah. Um, like touching your hand to grass, like very simple things, but being in that world, like that, it feels less tangible where he yeah. is. Yeah, you can still do it, but um, it's less tangible. And yeah. Eric shows me like, it's like eating. They, they miss, I mean, they can pretend, I guess we could say, but it's not the same. No, no. Mm -hmm. wow, mm, interesting. Uh, all right, so uh, this person says, I study numerology and found out that meatloaf, your numerology, according to your birth date, is very similar to Eric's numerology. Same number. They did not know that. Differently. It, it seems to indicate as well that you went through a walk-in process, maybe around 18. Could you please let us know if this is correct? Like somebody walked in his body? Is yeah. that what the... He doesn't agree with that. Okay. And explain the connection between the walk-in and the angelic connection and our origins. Okay, so no. It, it also, it would be interesting to understand if all of this is correct. Well, it's not. So, uh, so this you, Eric, you're ha having a numerology that's similar to Meatloaf. Do you want to say anything about that? 
it's news to both of them. They'll, they're going to look into that further. Okay. They're, laugh, they're both laughing. Okay. They're, they're, no, but they, they thank this person for figuring that out. Like they're what? not making fun of them. Have. No, it's, no, it took, no, no, took no. a lot of effort, but he doesn't feel that he, there was a walk-in. Okay. Yeah. Favorite song of yours? Rearview Mirror. Really? Favorite song that is not yours? Oh, that's a hard one, he says. Oh, he's too many. He can't pick one. Okay. That's fine. Some Elvis songs are really okay. like, ooh, he's like, really love, like, really get to him. Okay. Mm. Is there a little known fact that's kind of fun and quirky about you that nobody knows or very few people know about? Uh, he says he's very superstitious. Oh, really? Like mm -hmm. one superstition. Like he shows me a black cat. It could ruin oh, his day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it could like ruin his day. I'm like, I get oh, it. I got to have that too. Yeah, I get to that. Like, okay, do I? Is do there I, something bad going to happen? Okay, yeah. yeah, I feel like uh -huh. him. I'm like, okay, do I need I know, to like really. cancel everything? Oh, yeah. that's funny. Eric, yeah. uh, do you have any questions for him before we close? One finish yeah. questions, I think. Eric says he's pretty happy with how he's they like each other like they're good they're friends they really oh, are good i can feel the, can you feel it can you feel it? yeah they're yes. just like it feels really happy and positive um eric he's teaching him some some things about music i mean eric knows but you know meatloaf may know meatloaf a little more yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah and uh they just are really like nice together i like them together you know, you know well they both suffered you know, a lot at least from the yeah. outside for so long so and did they, they get that about each other um yeah, that's cool how long so, ago been hanging out together just about this year only okay yeah because it died in they, 20, january 22 so yeah it doesn't feel like that long oh is okay. that when it was okay yeah, yeah. i don't i don't know exactly so maybe all died. of the year january yeah, they said just about this year they've been getting to know each other they sensed that well i don't know eric told somebody to interview him so somehow it got through yeah didn't i didn't know um but apparently so they've been kind of friends and they knew that this was going to come so anything else you want to say any messages for the world you know, for five kids his, anything his message is for his wife i love you for his kids i love you but his message is to remember to be kind mm -hmm. because we don't know what battles people are facing in their daily lives. Yeah. We don't know how they feel about themselves, what kind of home they grew up in, mm -hmm. how people speak to them. An act of kindness can change their life. Yeah. So that's his overwhelming um, yeah. message for today. So it's really yeah. nice. I like him a lot. He's a good I guy. Do too. And yeah. remember to be kind to yourself too, right? Absolutely. All right. Um, he's thanking you. He says thank you to me because he was actually a little nervous about this, but he says we we did a good job yeah. together. He so. made you comfortable, huh? Yeah. I'm. Yeah, I think he's a very lovely soul. So yeah. thank you. I hope I you knew did. you would be the perfect fit. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Courtney. Thank, thank you, Meatloaf. CourtneyDillon.com, and of course, she's going to give me information that I can plug on social media about this new exciting event and um that's it thank you yeah. guys. i hope you feel better have a great day oh i will i already do uh okay. hit the notification bell please subscribe and share to have a good day everybody fans thank you bye, bye. you